Hi, oh, Catherine. Oh, good to hi, see you. Monty. So relations between Russia and Kazakhstan have been bumpy in the past. How did this meeting go? Well, it was an interesting one to watch because it was uh, Tokayev's first uh, visit abroad since he won uh, re-election, a new seven-year term in office in which he won with more than 80%, by the way, and no real opposition candidates. That election criticised by the OSCE. Um, so he went his first trip abroad to Moscow and both leaders there were saying that they were reaffirming their historic ties and saying that they were very uh, committed to the links, the Russia-Kazakhstan links. We can take a listen. Сегодняшний визит имеет особое значение. Это первый визит после переизбрания Касым Жамат Кемеровича президентом Казахстана. И в этом смысле он имеет, конечно, знаковое значение, подчеркивает особый характер наших отношений. Мы это высоко ценим. В этом году мы отметили 30-летие установления дипломатических отношений. Сегодня подписываем декларацию, которая посвящена этой исторической дате. Для Казахстана Российская Федерация была и остается основным стратегическим партнером, государством, с которым нас связывают глубинные взаимоотношения в самых разных отраслях. So, as you can see, that all looked very close, and uh, Kazakhstan's uh, president, Netogayev, reaffirming, saying that uh, Russia was Kazakhstan's main strategic partner. So, it all looked very friendly. But basically, he is performing and has been performing for quite some months now a very difficult balancing act, trying to keep Russia on side, not anger. Putin too much, but also he's been making overtures towards the West, to Europe in particular. And we know that the, the war in Ukraine has really caused uh, big spats, really, in, in, in diplomatic terms, in their relationship. He has deliberately and publicly distanced himself from Putin, notably over Ukraine. In June, he criticised, in front of Putin, Moscow's move to recognise Ukrainian separatist regions in Luhansk and Donetsk. Um, they've also refused initial calls by Russia uh, to send troops into Ukraine, and they've sent humanitarian planes in. So in the scheme of things, this is actually quite a big step away from Russia to the extent where some people in Kazakhstan fear that Russia could even be eyeing up or some parts of Russia's elite could even be buying up potential uh, action themselves. There have been a pundit on Russian TV and various politicians saying that, uh, in their words, Kazakhstan needs denazifying. Of course, we know that's the, the, the language used by some Russians baselessly for the invasion of Ukraine. So it's making some people in Kazakhstan rather nervous. And so perhaps that's why in this visit today, uh, Tokayev has reaffirmed ties there. But it's a very difficult relationship indeed. Yeah, fears that they could be next, essentially. Um, so this meeting comes as Russia has seen strained relations with, with several former Soviet states. Putin's becoming more isolated, isn't he? It's really interesting because the war in Ukraine is not only having, you know, massive economic implications in terms of sanctions, of course, diplomatic implications with the West and, and various countries. But in terms of the former Soviet states, the satellite states, if you look closely, you can see that the relationship with several states is weakening somewhat. So you've not only got Kazakhstan there, where, you know, let's not forget in January, Russia sent in troops to quell unrest there. Now, at the end of the year, you're having these open divisions. In other, um, with other satellite states, there have been slight signs of splits as well. You had at the recent meeting of the CSTO, the, the meeting of former Soviet states, you had Armenia's leader, Nikol Pashinyan, refusing to sign the text there and getting visibly angry about what's happening. Remember that war there with Azerbaijan and Russia was playing a peacekeeping role. Well, as its influence is waning and its eye has been turned elsewhere, Moscow's influence there is waning. And Armenia has asked the French president, Emmanuel Macron, to step in, uh, which the Russians are very unlikely to accept. Um, we've got the Kazakh leader, by the way, coming to Paris tomorrow. So the EU is trying to make overtures to all these Central Asian countries it can to try and get soft power, European soft power, perhaps try and widen the splits there between Russia and its former satellite states. Okay. Uh, France 21st, Catherine Norris-Trent. Catherine, thanks so much Thank for all you. that.